Well, we're just driving down the road and saw the shell of an old Torino back here and then see a Porsche up there. So there's obviously a car person that lives here. And I'm not sure how many car people there are in Midland, Texas. I know there's a lot of truck people. So I'm gonna go in and see if he knows where any old cars are. All right, well there is a car person here. And uh, he's got an, an interesting car too to show us. Uh, one that may be available for sale that needs to be restored. <laughs> Thanks. What's your name? Ron, Ron, Ron McIntyre. Ron Tom Cotter, how are you? Yes. So what, what do we have here? 72 Dodge Charger, yes. okay. Uh, do, you, do you drive it? Is it a good driving oh, car? It'll, it'll, yes, it'll, it'll drive. Uh, it's a 318 engine. 318, and it's got a, a torque flight, it's and it's got air, power steering, power brakes. Power steering, power brakes, and air conditioning, yes. So you got a 318 in there, but you got a 360. Over there that's being, yeah, it's, it's about half done now mm -hmm. so the 360 would fit sit right in there no yep. problem everything would work this is a car you'd you'd want to sell this is a car that i would sell yeah yeah what do you ask for something like that with the, with, if we throw the other engine what would it cost for the whole thing everything somewhere in the eight to ten i guess eight to ten thousand now this car is a solid car the floors are good on it everything looks really really good that's a man for a 70 car that's darn solid it, it, it looks you know even the trunk See the trunk. Man, look at that, yeah. Really good, solid. Yep. So how did you find this car? Was it on eBay or something? Uh, my wife, no, my wife was driving up to see her mother. She lives in Kansas and she was driving through a little town called Nawada, Oklahoma. And she drove through and she called me and said, hey, I saw a car sitting on the side of the road. So uh, my brother lives nearby. Huh. I'm probably about 15 miles from where she saw this car. So I called my brother to go by and look at it. He came down and he looked at it. He called me and he says, it looks like a pretty decent car. So let me say something, that wife's a keeper. If a <laughs> wife calls you about old cars, <laughs> I know. you got a gem. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. How many miles are on I this? I think it's like 57,000 or something like that. Yeah, 57,900 miles. Can you imagine that for a 1970? You have the key? Yes, you want to start? Yeah, that'd be cool. That old, yep. It's got that old gear reduction starter, all the price is at. How do you beat that? I mean, it's you got Krager mags, it's got a killer exhaust, and it's got a good body. Wow. I feel like buying it. <laughs> yeah. So we looked at this 70 Charger, but now we want to take a look at the Torino in the back. There's nothing scientific about finding old cars, by the way. You just got to keep your eye open and get them where you can. Now, Ron tells me there's rattlesnakes out here, but because it's uh, winter time, it's February when we were filming this, we don't have to worry about it. But I would, we probably wouldn't want to walk back here in the summer. Uh, interestingly, that Ron bought this car as a parts car. He's restoring a 429 four-speed 1970 Torino. Bought this as a parts car, and he said, I can't cut this car apart. It's, it's too solid. And it's a complete car, even though it's disassembled here, the doors are off it, the trunk's off it, the grill is out of it, the scoop's off it. All those parts come with it. it comes with a complete interior. The seats look good. The door panels look good. It's a 302 two-barrel, automatic on a column, bench seat. It was most recently dark blue, but if you look where some of the parts were taken off of, it was actually a powder blue car. This quarter panel has been kind of caved in, but it comes with another quarter panel. We're looking at a 48-year-old car and a desirable body style. He wants two grand for it. It's, uh, it's, pro it's probably a fair buy. You'd have to roll up your uh, sleeves and put some elbow grease in this thing, but uh, you, you, you could do worse than to start with a solid car like this. Sometimes car people who you would imagine would know where all the old cars are, it doesn't register. They, they look for pretty cars at Cars and Coffees 
or pretty cars inside people's garages, but they don't pay attention to the stuff that's lying in the backyard. Uh, so even car people could be fooled sometimes. We were told yesterday, don't expect to find any more cars in Midland, Texas, because they're all gone. Well, we found a couple here, a nice Mopar and a Torino, both solid cars, both at reasonable prices. So we're gonna see how many more we can find and prove that guy wrong. We're having lunch at a deli. It's one of the beauties about driving a car like this is that it starts conversations. And so a guy came up to us and, uh, that your car, yeah. And we start talking cars. Do you know of any old cars? And so now we're on our way to see, you know, a couple of guys just a, a couple of miles from where we had lunch that are old car guys. And I, I, I think it's this road right here. We'll see what it is. Uh, apparently they have old cars that, you know, in a, in a field that they buy, sell, restore, strip, sell parts, whatever. I don't know if it's it or not. It's a dirt road, but we'll see. I just saw a Falcon Ranchero, so we just turned around. Yeah, <laughs> next to a bull. Holy crap. Um, so this turned out to probably be a good lead. Hopefully somebody's home. Knock, knock. This is cold calling. I might as well be selling Encyclopedia Botanicus here. So we're here. We just pulled off the road because we saw some cars on the way to another place down there. And I said, oh, look, there's a Falcon Ranchero in the back. And I knock on the back door, and Susan Aubrey came out the front door, and we met right in the middle. And Susan is like the best person I've ever met. Well, thank you very and she's, much. She, she's got all sorts of cool cars and stories. So if we could start, you said the 40 truck is not for sale, but tell me about the Thunderbird. My husband does a lot of racing and uh, with the Baker boys here in Midland, and they go locally. And as you can tell by the junk around here that he's a collector, what Texas guy's not. He came across this, which is really, really rare to find. It's never been wrecked or anything like that. I had called him up and he said he wanted $1,000 for it, which is really a good find because it's not a kit. It is original. This is a fiberglass drag car. It's got a narrowed rear end. It's got a purpose-built frame. It looks like it's got those big tires that are gonna fit in here. It's all tubbed out. It's got rack and pinion steering with a square mm -hmm. box chassis. Thousand bucks. Mm-hmm. Such a deal. For a 57, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what's the, the rat ride we don't need to see, but the car's over what? here. Okay, so this is a 40 Pontiac, I think, right? And this is a hot rod. You know, we take a look at the inside here. It's it's got an automatic. It's got bucket seats. You know, it's an unfinished symphony. It's fat, flat black. Uh, it's got GM V8, probably a Chevy. It's got a five thousand dollar stereo in it. So it's got a you know probably a Chevy or. Yeah, I something. believe it is. Mm -hmm. That it takes two keys to start it. My husband designed that himself, so nobody could steal it. No kidding. Yeah. He, he did all this himself. Wow. You know, you couldn't, we couldn't even go to the drive-in or, or go out to eat without somebody coming up and going, you know, hey, I got laid in this car, you know, a car just like this, or, you know, and you'd be like, what? <laughs> hey, dude, you know, we're trying, we're at the movies. Oh, man. You know? It's got American racing mags in the back. And how much is he asking for this? He said 12. $12,000, okay. Which is a very good, very and, good And is that price. a driving car? Yes. It's a driver. The seal's out of it right now from just being set up. Yeah. That's all. Okay. So these McLarens, let me talk about this McLaren for a second. These were Ford Mustang Coupes that McLaren, uh, a, a subsidiary of McLaren race cars, or at least it used to be, which is in somewhere outside Detroit, they would cut the roofs off the coupes and make convertibles out of them. And they were they were two seaters. This is this is a, a two seater Mustang convertible, as opposed to the Mustangs that you would you would be able to buy at a dealership, which were four seaters. So this this whole panel, it's probably fiberglass, would lift up and the roof would go down, so it would be a total clean finish. And they had five liters with five speed transmissions, and they had suspension uh, modifications done to them. So this was the Mustang convertible before Ford came out with their own convertible. Interesting car. 
Yes. You know all this stuff. It's amazing how you know all these. Oh yes, I yes I I uh, once hung out with Mickey Thompson <laughs> in San Antonio, Big Daddy Don Garlic. Wow. Uh, which I think is pretty awesome. Okay, so here's your private little yard, junkyard. Back here. <laughs> I'm still laughing. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this Volkswagen. What's okay, the, yes. A Volkswagen drag car. I knew the year on this, but I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> look at that. Oh, yeah. He he raced this over in uh, Pinwheel. So that's it's still got a Volkswagen front end, but that's, yes. a, that's a Ford motor. Yeah, he had a Ford motor in there. It's probably yes. a 302 or something. Yeah, but it was bored out. And the it's whole... got a fiberglass front end. It's got a roll cage. And how much is this? I, I'm pretty sure that he had like um, he had twelve hundred dollars on this at one time mm -hmm. because that is he has more than that in it. Oh, you know, sure, twelve hundred dollars. People okay. used to run up like you know back when it was, and they'd say the Volkswagen's up there, the Volkswagen's up there, and people would bring their cars and because it was so lightweight. Yeah, you know. Yep. And it would, you know, they'd say, oh. Could it do wheelies? And people, you know, I, I, it was just unbelievable. <laughs> so but, we got uh, an MG Midget over here. Yes, sir. When when he was doing a towel job over in uh, St. Lawrence, mm -hmm. the um, there was an old farmer, a rich old farmer. And uh, I told Rick, I said, no more cars, no more junk. And he said, well, just this one. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so it's got a, I can't tell, but it's probably a 1275, which is the largest engine you can get in this car. Could be a 1098, dual side draft SUs. They make great little race cars. Well, I'll tell you what, that 79 right there, I got a title to that. Mm -hmm. But this one, you know, excellent body. At $1,000. At $1,000. And you got a title. Okay. Got a title. It's got everything but an engine and transmission. Okay, now I see back here a Falcon. Yes, sir, a 64 Falcon Futura. Okay, so this got a 260, had a 260 V8 in it. Yes, it did, but I had a, a 289 in it. Did you really? Yes, I did. And it had a floor shift? No, it was an automatic. And I got pulled over several times. So this was your er car? That was my very first car. Your first car? Yeah. How old were you when you got this car? Uh, 18 and a half, and uh, paid uh, 150 bucks for it. And what do you want for it now? Uh, I'd have to have at least 13. 1300? Uh, yeah. Well, you only paid 150. I know, but it's, it's you know, uh, what do they call it? Sen sentimental value. Oh, okay. And I have the hood. Yep. I have everything for it. Do you have an engine for it? We got 25 motors. Okay. There's that wind picking up now, right? Yes. Now we got another Ranchero here. Now that one I let go pretty good. Uh, this one, I let this one go for $600. $600. Do you have a title for that? No. No title. Are you kidding me? No, that that one somebody dumped on us. So the this is the incorrect hood. The right, the correct hood's back there. So you right. got no engine, no transmission. You so know? So $600. Bucks. Okay. Yeah, $600. I'll go five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred dollars, because you know, just the emblems alone mm -hmm. are are worth seventy bucks. Oh, let's look at this uh, El Camino, the Ecolano line oh, first. Oh, we're saving the the Primo for last. So it's got no front end, no rear end, no engine. <laughs> well. Did you really expect motors to be in these things? Well, you know it's. Oh, it's running! Yeah. Take off. What's the story with this? What year is it? That's a 63 Econoline van. Is you selling that or is that sentimental? No, I'd, I'd sell that one. It's just a body. It's all, It's just yeah, a body. But that one I'd have to have at least 15 for that one. 1990 was last. In, Pardon? Right, 1990. Yeah, that's probably about right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 1500 for that. Good body if you wanted to have a Econoline project. The, the hardest part is to find a good body. The, the easy part is to find the front ends and rear ends and engines, so. But you know, they have a thing called <clears throat> eBay and oh, yeah. Yahoo. So last but not least, 
in the garage here, we have a 19, I think 77 Chevy Blazer. This is a first gen Chevy Blazer. And uh, it had the removable hard top in the rear part of the body, it's fiberglass. And this is a two wheel drive car. So you can drop this thing down. A lot of guys love these cars because they could slam down the ground. And this car, you know, it appears to have new fenders. It's got a, a V8 four barrel high rise. It's got wire wheels. It's a project for sure. It was last on the road in 2010. And it appears that these fenders are bowed out, kind of flared, customized. They have a title for the car and it's, it's 1800 bucks. I mean, that to me is a good deal. You know, like this is a project car that somebody could make into a tow vehicle or just a cool ride the way it is. And it's half done. I mean, there's a, there's a great motor in there. And uh, I think they have all, a lot of the pieces to, to finish this car. So 1800 bucks, how do you beat that? We say goodbye to uh, our friends, the Aubreys, and uh, appreciate you letting us walk around your uh, property for a while. Happy hunting.